night as well. And just wanted to pick up on that. Mihal Martin on one side, Maria Steen on the other. John, good morning. Good morning. And can I, can I say on behalf of the people of Cork, well done to yourself and your staff. This is the third day now that you're exploring in depth into this whole ridiculous referendum that we're, and you're the only one that's giving people a voice. And well done. Uh, well, now, thank I you for that. I just hope it's not, uh, I hope on the other side is not too much. And because on Friday, we could have a 30 or 40% turnout on the basis that people don't understand it. Uh, they don't trust the government or they couldn't be bothered voting. So we'll have to wait and see. Well, well I reckon there's going to be a backlash anyway against the government because it's the first opportunity, Neil, that the people have to battle the government because they believe everyone is talking about the amount of people are coming into the country at the moment and they're still in an already overburden services, right? So I reckon part of that vote, the percentage of the vote on Friday will be to battle the government just on that alone. Yeah. I also think, yeah. Yeah. I know I watched the debate last night with Maria Steen, uh, who is a qualified uh, architect and barrister, right, come up against the world's greatest bluffer, Michal Mel. <laughs> he actually accused her. He said, you're an ACL. He said, you have, you have rigorously, he said, opposed divorce in this country. And Maria Steen, in 1994, he was only 15 years of age going to school. So why did he get that one wrong then? So yeah, said, but I think, he, I, think, I think, yeah, that was kind of half clarified, uh, but... Um, he did then talk about all for other referendums that she was active in at the same time. Yeah, but that's, that's when she became an adult, obviously, like with yeah. the same sex knowledge and, and the, 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 the abortion, right? Yeah. But she, I mean, she, she said, worse to the effect that, she said, worse to the effect that Michal Martin's been in politics for so long now that we need new thinking and we need other people to be making decisions on our behalf because he's been in politics yeah. since she was in primary yeah. school. Yeah, and she was perfectly right on that. He's been around a long time now, and he hasn't delivered. Simple as that. There was nobody looking for this, these referendums. I saw no women marching in the streets. So this, this is a supreme slap in the face, right, to the women that choose to stay at home. If they want to go to work line, but when they're at work, I was in the supermarket yesterday, I saw a girl with her phone in between customers and look at a picture of her two kids. Where did she want to be? Not in that supermarket. She wanted to be at home, but she had to go to work, right? This is a slap in the face for any child psychologist in Kennedy that the most formative but, years of a young child yeah. is from one to seven. And to have the mother in the home for that is the supreme answer. But there, I, I accept what you're saying, but however, in modern day society, there's an awful lot more people involved in the rearing than just exclusively the mother. The father's involved in the rearing. The grandparents do their well, yes, bit. There's, 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 there's no disputing that. But so that's me, why they want to change it to recognize the provision no. of care well, by members I, of the I, family. I, I, as your previous call of that you had said there, right? They could, they could have extended that out. But what they have done, they have attacked the woman in the home and everything that woman brings to the, the, the being a home mother, a carer, looking after the kids. It's a tough job. No man will understand the maternal draw of a woman when she's at work that she'd rather be at home minding her kids rather than strangers bringing them up inside in a crash, right? The maternal pull is there. No man, Leo Varadka and Roger Gorman will never have a wife at home, so a female wife. So they will never understand the draw of the female to the home and the children. Ah, but you, could, you shouldn't never... say that just because of their sexual orientation. You should be saying that about any man, then, if you're saying it at all. No, no, but the, and the, these guys, I mean, one is the children's minister, and yeah. the other guy is the, the chief, the prime minister. Well, no, but just, I mean, uh, you're saying you're saying as politicians, as opposed to Leo Varadkar, the teacher being teacher being gay. Is that what you mean? They're politicians well, the for because they're men. They will never have a female at home, so they they, they never understand me. No, look, we are we are the women in our lives. You are married. No, I've had several ladies in my life, right? But the thing is. No one will understand the maternal draw. The woman conceives the child, carries the right. child, gives birth to the child, yeah, nurses the child. Like, the, no man will ever understand but the, that. But the, to disrespect the woman in the home is an abomination. But sure, look at the disrespect to the article that already exists. It says that the state of Ireland recognises that by her life within the home, woman gives to the state a support for which the common good cannot be achieved. But that isn't the case now anymore because that's like saying, no, it's not because, you're saying yeah, your place as a woman is in the home. We recognize that it's full time for you. It's very important. And then they go on by adding even more 
vagueness to it in the other article saying you won't be obliged to go out to work to neglect your duties in the home. So they had to well, change that because they've done nothing to help people who want to stay at home anyway. You're right, they do nothing because in Gareth's children came on the scene first going way back. He actually went on the late day to work at and said he was trying with the idea of paying women at home. The very women who were having a referendum about Gertie Hadden had a brief flirtation with the same thing that he was going to pay women to stay at home. That meant it never materialised. But the whole thing is that the women that want to stay at home, they have to be respected. And they just get the care of money in as well. To have the, the audacity again to put the word strive in there. Right? They're pushing this, the onus of the care back on families. Okay. And it's an opt-out for the government. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, I never was an admirer of Maria Steen's views on anything, but always uh, listen to her as she's articulate without ever raising her voice. And boy... Uh, was she good? Um, she really rattled me. Hall, he got it wrong about her involvement in the divorce referendum. And will she, when he when she pulled him up on it, uh, he uh, w he should go and fire whoever briefed him before he went on prime time. He said continually. He said constituency instead of constitution. Now, obviously, his brief included red herrings, as did Michael McGrath this morning. Says Mary. Okay, thank you for that. Back to the phone line. Uh, Sean, good morning. Hey, Neil, how are you doing? Good. Um, you've been texting I for think, years now, um, and thank have. you for that. I'm wondering, does that mean we're in a durable relationship? That's right. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? I have a durable relationship with loyal listeners, yeah. yeah. We are, <laughs> we're a form of family then, are we, Sean? <laughs> yeah, so there's going to be an important day for you with the results. <laughs> I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> have you any yeah, more to like say that. besides that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. That's the text I was. No, like it is. It is meaningless term, really. Like your relationship, and the fact they want to insert that in, into the constitution, like it shows uh, disregard uh, on behalf of the government for the people of Ireland. It's it's our most important document. It's the foundational document. So how how are you going to word something regarding the family or a family unit that isn't married? What word would you use if it wasn't durable? Well, where you seen last night, like I encourage anyone to find someone with a TV license and watch the prime time replay last night because she, she said the vertical relationship of the parent to the child, that's already covered in the Constitution. That they're, like, the, the proposed wording isn't, is not fixing anything that, that they say is going to fix. It's not. Um, well, yeah. Well, it talks about um, it talks about family as the natural, primary, and fundamental group of society. Um, it talks about the state pledging itself with regards to the special care of the institution of marriage. So, the institution of marriage now has forty two percent of children born outside of it. So, it needs updating. That's, you know, like. that's an interesting one. The forty two percent. That's in twenty twenty two. But sure, the government made it very difficult for people to get married in the previous two years. And a baby isn't going to wait around like the baby's coming. So Ah, well, like, come I mean, on, we all, I, we, all know, we all know people who are in loving relationships and have children and have no intention of ever getting married. Um, like, that, that's but a that's fact. just part of it. Like, the figures they trot out have to be questioned as well. Okay. But I think the overall reason that the government are pushing for this is that they're failing fantastically at the moment. And instead of improving their performance, which will be difficult, they just want to lower the standards in the Constitution. And to put in this watery language, like, at the moment it says, shall not. That's very definite. They want to replace that with strive. Like, an example, if I said to you, Neil, Friday, I, I take you to your favourite bar, and I, I pay for all the drink, top shelf, buy all the substantial meals you want, and I say, I shall meet you at 7pm. Or will I say, I will strive to meet you at 7pm, and then I turn up at half ten, the bar's closed, and so, oh, sorry, I, I couldn't pay for your night out there. Sorry about that. That's kind of what the government wants to put in, this kind of lofty promise, and they, they'll end up doing nothing yeah. there. Okay, good points. Thank you for that. Text 0868-104-106. Um, uh, I'm, I'm happy to continue with calls and text, for sure I am, and mix it up after 11 o'clock, but tomorrow will be the last opportunity to give it some time, if time is needed, because on Friday we won't be able to talk uh, about it because of the moratorium. Um, or is that, well, actually, it mightn't even be tomorrow that we can talk about it. It begins tomorrow. No, I think we'll be okay. I think the moratorium starts like two in the afternoon. But anyway, if needs be tomorrow, that's good. Uh, I'm not on disability, but I am on illness benefit. My mum passed away suddenly last week. I have multiple sclerosis and I suffer from PT.
PTSD. I don't know where I stand now with my mum's home. Is there anyone who can offer advice? Um, I don't know that that's necessarily referendum related, but um, uh, I'm not quite. Your mum's home is a council home. I see. Ah, that's interesting. I, I've dealt with this in the past, actually. Does this come down to, um, you know, is, is it a case of whose name is on the rent book or something like that? Uh, I can do a little bit of work on that. That's a that's an interesting one because I have dealt with in the past. But it was in times when somebody in the family had to move out of the council home after their parents had died. Um, and I'm sure that somebody listening to me will also be able to help in that regard. Um, I'm on disability. Um, I'm, I'm not on disability, uh, but I am on illness benefit. Mum passed away last week. I have multiple sclerosis, suffer PTSD. I don't know where I stand now with my mum's council house. Is there anyone else who can offer advice? Uh, well, certainly I would advise you to do absolutely nothing about it. I mean, in the sense that don't go asking questions of the city or county council on the matter. Not for now anyway. Uh, but um, just hold tough for a while because I'm sure somebody's been through this scenario in the past and I bet that they'll share. Text 0868-104-106. <laughs> Family immigration, that's the polygamy aspect. Strive in the change now. They will, stri they will strive to support you. Strive. Um, to say that this puts me into despair um, is an understatement. My daughter has a burnout, right? Do uh, let me stay with phone lines. Uh, Paddy, good morning. Uh, good morning, Noel. I'm going to try and get so as many people on as I can. In paragraph McGraw, why he and his government won't give the money for the return of the Cork to all train. It would bring back a lot of happiness to Cork families. I think Irish Rail recently said that it would be doable. I mean, I know that the sleepers are up and the tracks are up, but they could do it. And they could have a track all the way to Waterford, I suppose, and also have a cycle lane and a walking lane next to it to keep the cyclists happy. 20 million on this farce, yet they can't sort out the Mallow Bypass. Uh, what about some cultures where they have durable relationships with minors? There are men marrying girls as young as 10. Are we going to be looking at that in Ireland as well. Um, can a man with four wives and six girlfriends and 20 children get the dole for this durable? Just call me an irate listener. John was actually watching primetime last night as well and just wanted to pick up on that. Mihal Martin on one side, Maria Steen on the... Continue to have the role. Oh, whatever a politician says, many people will say it's a durable marriage. Um, well, it's not a durable for gay women. It covers in a yes vote. That, um, but I thought that because they are as the allowance was written text, actually, if the guy who gave the bike. Um, yeah, I suppose really. Um... Anyway, keep them coming. Text 0868104106. Uh, Paddy standing by. John standing by. Deirdre first. Deirdre, good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you. I know you're talking to me on your break, so appreciate you taking our grass in the back garden would be due. I think that we can go out and vote on Friday, and I would just encourage people to go out and vote, be a mistake, and I think it would be <laughs> The proposals to change... Uh, the It'll change. They're working out on it. On, on the... Don't say that in the proposed change above. Two percent of children... I mean, that horse is Tom Clonan who lost text that says the government of our into a... It's referred to in the singular, oh, no are. vote in this... 4106. Becky, good morning. Hello, Neil. How morning. are things? Your thoughts on uh, the upcoming referendums? Well, Neil, I'm I'm actually a candidate with AIM2. We're the only political party in the Dáil that are calling for a no-no vote in this referendum. Um, I mean, obviously, there's two parts to this. Um, I'm totally opposed to the deletion of the word woman from the Constitution. Now, I know that the way it's referred to in the singular sense, yes, it is a, a bit archaic, um, and the, the text can be updated to reflect modern language but and become more inclusive, include the fathers as well. But don't be so inclusive that you forget about us, the mothers. Uh, who sacrificed our lives, who shed blood to bring these children into the world. We are the ones that are at home nursing our babies. I mean, the fathers can't breastfeed their children. We do that. We nurture them in a way that fathers can't. And we should be included in, in uh, the... Uh, 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 a woman with children said to me over the weekend that a woman, uh, and, and just words to the effect of, you know, women's place is in the home. Is it outdated or not? Where the reality actually is that mothers, even though those who work make more sacrifices and do more work than men yes. or fathers. Uh, is, is, that, is, that, is that fair? Is that sexist? Is that unkind to men and fathers? Or is it well, true? Well, include, include the fathers. That's what I'm saying. We discussed this as a, as a party. You can say men and women. You can say mothers and fathers. But don't delete the only reference.
reference to our mothers in the Constitution. I mean, the cheek of them to do this on International Women's Day and just two days before Mother's Day, when all our politicians will be taking selfies with their mothers, you know, paying their respects for, for the sacrifices that their mothers did and th- that they did the best in rearing them, when at the same time deleting them from the Constitution. Now, and the other part of the text, um, the Constitution as it stands at the moment, says that the state shall endeavour to ensure that mothers are not obliged to go out and work due to economic reasons. Yeah. Now, if that's not happening, if that's not happening, that isn't uh, the Constitution's fault. It's the, the fault of successful government. But, did it, but, the con- it, but the even job. the Constitution in 1937 didn't even fix that. They just said, and it was notional, that we'll endeavour, there's the word endeavour in the old Constitution, so that's watery, to ensure that mothers shall not be obliged by economic necessity to engage in labour to the neglect of their duties in the home. But that's only notional. Yeah. They said that nearly 100 years ago, but did nothing at all to help, and it's considerably worse now with economic pressure with regards to housing and debt and you know issues regarding trying to absolutely. put food on there. so absolutely so. and i agree with you and i say update the text make make it stronger um like the government should be obliged to make sure that they that they are supporting mothers to do the very important work that they do in the home yes update it but don't delete us don't take it out completely and if you actually delete that second part um of the text, even the endeavour part, if you get, they, they want to get rid of that completely, which means they're taking the onus off them. And not not really, is, not really. Forgive me. They may well be. They, no, hang on a second. They may well be getting rid of the word endeavour, but they're replacing it with the word strive. Same thing. Yeah, I, I, Neil. New Year's Day. I strived to give up chocolate, and that didn't last long. Yeah. Strive is just as watery. They should be obliged. They should be committed. This strive actually just pushes the onus back onto us in the family to literally, you know, make way, make ends meet yourself. It, it's just not good enough. Okay. And I mean, can I just pull up Michael McGrath? He mentioned there, he said that um, we that the Constitution shouldn't be denying women the right to work. He was inferring that the current wording does that. How dare he to actually go on air and, and tell these untruths? I am a working mother. Like, I just recently became a, a mother, and I, I'm a woman. I, the Constitution does not stop me from going out and being successful. I had a very successful career to date. I'm successful in my own personal life as well. Like I said, I just recently are, are became your a chi- mother. Are your children... Oh, you only recently became a mother. Yeah, so I just so. recently became a mother. And just stay with me, Neil. I, ha- I, I would be worried if the onus is put back on the family and taken completely uh, away from the government, if the government is being in- insulated here now, what is going to happen? Maternity benefit, children's Nothing. allowance. Nothing. No, but, but how do you know? Nobody has actually because there'd be, said that. There'd, be, there'd be revolution. There would be just a step too far anyway, to begin with. Like, if you, well, if you, if you look at it, why should the state be involved in the rearing of families in the first place? I think the no, answer to that is because people can't do it out of economic necessity themselves. Well, I want to be able to rear my own family. I don't want the state to have any input in the rearing of my family. But they should support me as a mother in rearing my family. And uh, like you said, women are being forced to, you know, drop their kids off at a crash at the half six, seven o'clock in the morning, travel. I have to travel an hour and a half to get to work. I work in a pharmaceutical company, work all day, come home, do it all in reverse, just to pay our mortgages, our rent, and trying to get by in life. That is the government's fault. Are you that amongst the two-thirds of women, supposedly, uh, this is the stat I've given, that two-thirds of women would prefer to be at home rearing their children than going out to work? That, that, that's not a supposedly. That is an amoric poll where 70%, yes, of mothers want to stay at, at home with their children, um, especially in the early years. And it's not like we're sitting around um, watching television all day. We are, we are working <laughs> in the home. No, I don't, no, 
Sorry, I'm suggesting that you watch and judge Judy all day. It's hard work. I know that. I'm just saying, uh, when I leave the child with his, with his dad, uh, he does feel it at the end of the day. It's a long day's right. work. It's never ending. You get a break when you're in the workplace. You don't when you're all at right. home. Okay. Unless, um, thanks, Becky. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you. Let me get on with other calls. Appreciate it. Uh, I give as much time as I can to everybody. Back after the break, calls on the way. Text 0868 104 106. Call Neil now.